Stanley Baker is 30 years old. He's tall, dark and rugged, and yet, as his acting has so often proved, there's a gentleness behind the toughness. Right now, Stanley Baker might still be down a Welsh mine, but for... Well, since he's in the studio, let's get him to tell us his story himself. Welcome to our programme, Stanley. Um, just why exactly is it that you're not down a Welsh mine? Well, I think it all started when I was 14 years of age, Mac. I was doing an end-of-term school play in the village I was born in, Ferndale, and on the valley. And a director came down from Ealing Studios to looking for locations. He saw this play I was doing and took me back to Ealing, and I did a test and got the part. Uh, that was the first thing I ever did in this profession. Then, six months later, I was 14 years and six months old, Emily Williams did a play in the West End called The Druid's Rest, and I got a part in that and um, started acting on the stage, and I suppose that gave me the real taste for acting and, and the theatrical profession. As easy as that? Well, that was as easy as that, yes. Then things got a little tough, of course. Um, I went into rep. I went to Birmingham rep for two years. Uh, I did several tours around Great Britain. And then I was called up into the army. I came out of the army, came back to London looking for work. I stooged around for about, oh, I don't know, 18 months without any work. And finally, um, I got a break in the Cruel Sea, the film of the Cruel Sea. I was in America at the time in a Christopher Fry play. I read the book. I wanted to play the part of Bennett very much. I came back from America, rang up Charlie Friend, who was directing the picture, and managed to persuade him to give me a test for the Cruel Sea, and I got the part. Surely, playing Bennett must have had certain drawbacks. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, Mac. Uh, there was there was the danger at the beginning, playing a part like that, and a couple of other parts that followed, that I would be typecast. There's always the, or actors' fears of being typecast, but fortunately, this didn't happen to me. I managed to uh, mingle with the villains a certain amount of sympathetic parts. Which of your film performances has come nearest to what you set out to achieve? <laughs> I don't know. That's that's a really tough question, Mac. An actor sets out to achieve what is asked of him. He's given a script and uh, he sets out to play the part to the best of his ability. Stanley, somebody once told me that you might easily have become a professional fighter. Is that true? Yeah, I suppose that's true, Mac. I, did, uh, I was very interested in boxing. I did a lot of amateur boxing. But um, I never really got around to being a professional. <laughs> but this, I think this uh, boxing experience has held me in pretty good stead and for the films I've made because I always seem to get mixed up in some kind of a scrap. Well, where there's scrapping, there's toughness. The sort of toughness that Stanley dished out in films like The Red Berry, Hell Below Zero, and Hell Drivers. Which again reminds me that that brought in another of your interests, driving. Yeah, that's true, Mac. Although in Hell Drivers, I'd drive a lorry full of ballast. I'd rather be driving a fast motor car. But uh, in this film, I think I had one of the best scraps I've ever had on the screen. I got involved with a character called Patrick McGoohan, who happens to be a tough boy himself. And uh, he plays in the film the pace setter of the unit. I, my, our paths cross at one time in the film, and we have a scrap. During the making of the film, my boxing didn't uh, do me much good because both Pat and myself came out with various bruises and various loose teeth. <laughs> well, let's have a look at Stanley and Patrick McGowan dishing it out on the screen. You, I'm talking to you. I'm uh, not talking to the yellow belly. If he wants to find out why his pay was stopped, ask Ed. Ed? Yeah. He'll stop you, right? Who put this on Tom? Uh, you mean on Yellow Belly? Me. I'm the road foreman. Yeah. And that's not all you are. What else am I? You scum. Come on, 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 come on,
Get into him. Come on, you. 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 Stanley Baker is obviously no kid glove actor. He's at his best in good action films. But every actor likes a change of pace, a, a chance to prove that he can do something different. And it happened um, to you, Stanley, didn't it? Yes, it happened to me, Mac. It happened to me about two years ago when Lawrence Olivia wanted me to play Richmond in Richard III. Um, I was very glad of it at the time because it gave me a chance to get away from the rough, rugged characters I had been playing on the screen. And you can imagine this is an opportunity I welcome very much. Stanley Baker is a determined young man, and I'm sure that he'll get what he wants. Uh, Stanley, one of your recent successes has been Violent Playground. In spite of its title, we again find you playing a sympathetic role. Yeah, I do, Mac. Uh, I enjoyed making this film very much, too. It's, from my point of view, it was the ideal film to be involved in. It had what all films need. It had entertainment, but it also try to say something. It was a story about the juvenile liaison scheme that the city of Liverpool police started a few years back. Um, it deals with juvenile crime and has an answer to juvenile crime. In actual fact, in Liverpool, through this scheme, they've cut their juvenile crime, they have some startling figure of something like 66% over the past two years. I got really um, enthralled about working with the police in Liverpool. We went up there and we worked with them for about a month. And they're doing a Really a fine job, a fantastic job up there with juvenile crime. In Violent Playground, Stanley showed a great tenderness in handling the youngsters who appeared with him in this film. Here we see him meeting the two children who were to become his particular problem in the film. 